Is this a look? I think I don't think I'm courageous enough to do an entire video with that on my head. Oh, hey, bright eyes. Do you come here often? Maybe you should, you know, like maybe you should subscribe. Maybe, maybe visit a little more often. Baby needs, baby needs some more views. <laughs> Welcome to part two of I have a bunch of plants in my living room and I'm gonna show them to you. I gotta close my window cause my neighbors think I'm crazy. Hey, I haven't told you guys about this kitty cat hammock. Why am I talking to you from so far away? Answer me. I recently made a video. Things I can't live without or stuff I can't live without. I don't know. I'll put it. I'll put a card up at the top. It's like suction cupped to the window. And you would think to yourself, there's no way that that can hold a cat. It can hold two. One of them being particularly dense. Not in, in, the, in, not in terms of intellectualism. He's quite clever, actually. You know, he's a thick boy. I'll leave a link to this hammock down below. Because if you have cats in a window, it's amazing. I'm going to put this down. Cause if I keep holding it, I'm gonna keep sipping it. And then this tour is gonna get real weird. It'll just get to a point where like I'm filming the entire video like this. This is, this is my Begonia Marmaduke. It was definitely named after the Great Dane in the comic strip Marmaduke. All right, that's enough. That's enough of that jazz. We gotta take this seriously. By the way, if you haven't watched part one and you're here for part two, what are you doing? What do you think you're a character in a Charlie Kaufman film? You just don't like to do things in chronological order? Why don't you stop here, go back, watch part one and revisit. I'm just kidding. You can watch it in any order you wish as long as you watch both because like I said, baby needs the views. Last week I already talked about the staghorn ferns. If you are interested in staghorn ferns, I have numerous videos on them. If you are interested in the lights that are above my staghorn ferns that make them look A, amazing, and B, totally cool, you can check out my video, it was on uh, Soltec Solutions. I highly suggest watching those videos if you are in the market for beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, indoor grow lights that perform really well. 15%, check it out. Anyway, let's move on. Up here, we have, it's fine, everything's fine. Okay, seriously, pillow, you gotta go. We're gonna call this chaotic good. I had a long day. This is my Pogos Marble Queen. I must have had this since 2016 and I have definitely chopped it a time or two. So it would probably be longer than it is now if I had not done that. I know that the whole cool idea behind pothos is that they're like really, really easy care trailing plants that grow really fast. This is a little bit of a slower grower because it's variegated. I don't know what to do with this stuff after a while. So I just kind of wrap it around and it's just, it's a happy little plant, man. And I think it looks really cute in this pink Elho pot. Let's put this puppy back up here. One of my oldest plants for sure. I don't know how often, I don't know how loud I to shout. I don't know why I did not put my lapel mic on. Anyway, one of the oldest plants that I own right here, folks. Here she is in all her glory. I don't really want to talk about this plant. <laughs> I just need to move it into a better place. Uh, we've been struggling for a long time because very shortly after I purchased this plant, I had powdery mildew problems with all of my begonias. This one caught it real bad. This is Begonia Iron Cross. And as you can see, it's, it's really tiny. This plant can get really massive. I just saw one at the greenhouse yesterday with leaves the size of my hand. It was huge and I had to like talk myself out of getting it because I have one. I forgot that I have one because it's so because it's pathetic, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a little pathetic. So I'm hoping that the amount of light that it's now getting is going to help it improve a lot. If not, I'll put it in my begonia cabinet, which you will see pretty soon. Okay, <laughs> here's the thing. All right, you, you're looking at a corner of my apartment where like not all of my favorite plants are located. I got this pink syngonium just like as a filler for my Wally Grow containers in my bedroom, but I didn't have space for this one, so I potted it up all by itself, and I got, I'm just like, I'm not a Syngonium person, you know? We all have our strengths and our weaknesses. I feel like we're not soulmates, we're roommates. You know what I mean? And I don't want you to judge me for this one because I just potted it up not that long ago, and I have not yet put stakes in it. I probably am going to find another humidifier to put on these shelves, just to supplement this plant specifically. Begonia maculata whitey is one of the most special plants that has ever come into my life. And it's the entire reason why my channel name is 
Betsy Begonia. <laughs> I started collecting plants in 2016. You know, you, I had prayer plant, pothos, a Diefenbachia was my first house plant ever. Things just kind of escalated <laughs> from there. But it wasn't until the spring of 2018 that I took a trip to Porto, Portugal, and I stayed in an Airbnb. There was kind of like a back porch area and there was this big, beautiful begonia maculata whitey. And I was like, I gotta know what this is. I gotta know, like, what is this plant? It looks so exotic, so extraordinary. I've never, I'd never seen anything like it. I eventually got a hold of one. And then later that year, I started my YouTube channel. I named my channel after this plant because it just had such a, a great effect on me. And I was so, I just found it so majestic. I have to stake it and I have to move it to, it won't actually fit there anymore. So I'll probably, I'll put it in a different corner, like in my begonia cabinet or something. It's become very, very difficult to find the perfect spot in this apartment where this plant can really thrive, which is a little bit heartbreaking for me, but that's life. In my last video, I basically showed you my entire Hoya collection, except for two. This one, Hoya Jennifer, uh, really, really cool plant. Except mine is kind of wonky. <laughs> I don't know why. Every leaf is a surprise. You never know what kind of curveball Jennifer's gonna throw at you. She keeps you on your toes. <laughs> Jennifer is really extraordinary. She's doing really well in the windowsill. Some of her leaves are curvy and some of her leaves are wonky. And you know, we love Jennifer for who she is and, and what she does. And what she does is make me happy, so. I found this plant as a cutting uh, when I traveled to Stockholm, Sweden to visit this giant garden expo. I talked about it in my previous video, this giant garden expo where the Swedish Hoya Society was selling cuttings. I don't remember who I bought this cutting from, but I think it had three leaves at the time. So this is how much it's grown since 2019. And it's now putting out more normal looking leaves as time goes on. So I feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's getting better and better as time goes on. There was one Hoya that was on my shelving unit in my previous video that I totally skipped over and I would love to show it to you. Hoya erythrostema pink, uh, pink being that it has pink blooms, which differentiates it from different types of erythrostema. It's just, it's an absolutely beautiful plant. I love it. I got it from Rian Orchide. I, I did like a Hoya haul last December. I like to buy myself Hoya, <laughs> myself. Wow. Is that telling or is that not telling? <laughs> when it comes to about Christmas time, because it still remains a little bit warm here in Lille, the temperature doesn't drop too far until like late January and February. If I feel like it's been a tough year, I will buy myself some Hoyas. And uh, so last December I bought myself some Hoyas. It's an absolutely beautiful Hoya that I would really recommend to anybody who is just looking for something that's more easy care. I would compare the care of this more to like Hoya Carnosa, for example. I haven't had any issues with it at all. So if you're somebody who, you know, isn't able to provide terrarium levels of humidity, then I would say that you could definitely have this plant. Okay, I'm with you, Thank you so much for your money. Bye. It, it actually is very heavy. So this is, isn't that pot beautiful? Look at that really nice pot. I found it at my local greenhouse and I just really like it. Begonia credneri, and I do mention it in a recent video that I made. I think it's five low light house plants that are also easy care. This begonia is just super cool. It is a really, really top heavy plant. It's just massive and the stems and the leaves are really, really heavy. So there's absolutely no way that you could keep it in a plastic pot without something really heavy to stabilize that little plastic pot. Keep him in this big boy. He got knocked over a couple times, but we took care of that together. It's a really lovely begonia and it doesn't require copious amounts of humidity. If you want to know more about it, I would highly suggest checking out my low light houseplants video because I talk about it pretty extensively there. But otherwise, I just I just think it's, fa this is fan it's fantastic. It took me a, it took me a, it took me a bit to s s spit that out. <laughs> Jeez Louise! Even though right now it looks a little dumpy, I'm not gonna lie, hey, hey, you and I, we're ha we have a good relationship. We're straight with one another, okay? He looks a little dumpy, but he's straightening out because he always puts out new growth. It's a beautiful play. All right, let's move on to the next area of my apartment. This is not a good angle, but <laughs> I'm doing my best. We're gonna do these ones real quick so that people can't see me. Here we got the worst anthurium you ever seen in your whole life. He used to be doing better than he is now. I got it for like $4.95 at 
my local greenhouse that I like to visit frequently. In my kitchen, he was doing okay, but I noticed that he was kind of growing like this, you know? And so I thought, well, maybe it's because it's such indirect light. So I'm gonna put him in a place where he can get more direct light. Did that help? Absolutely not. It did not help in any way, shape, or form. So what you see is what you get. I got an anthurium and he looks like this. It has bloomed three times and it did have one other leaf. Unfortunately, somebody who was visiting my apartment accidentally snapped the stem of that leaf, so it lost a leaf. In my last video when I showed my um, Hoya Australis Lisa, I said that I have a very large Hoya Australis in the same room. I am five foot four or like one meter 64. And so this plant is about as tall as me. You know, it's a great plant. I mean, it's, it's also an unstoppable grower. I constantly have to chop off the vines that it puts out. You can't stop this plant. The only thing that I really am sad about is that it will never ever bloom. I've had it since I think 2018 from like jardinerie, jardin I cannot speak French. Jardinerie Truffaut, I can't speak French, forget it. Uh, Truffaut Gardens. Let's not do French tonight, okay? It's been a long day. I don't, I, you know, I don't wanna do French tonight. I remember I did a video um, that was like, you know, kind of a silly handheld tour of, uh, a, you know, my favorite plant nursery in Paris. And I think I bought this on that day. When I bought it, it was like, oh, I would say 40 centimeters tall. It was like on a little trellis. And now it's as tall as me. And it really wants to be taller. <laughs> One just will not bloom. It will not bloom. But it is a really beautiful plant to have, you know, in my living room. I give him lots of light. He's here in the window. He seems very happy. Why am I still talking? You probably can't hear me because I got a shotgun mic. Down here I have a ficus elastica variegata. When I bought this, he was just a little feller. I mean, it is a very slow grower. This is a slow <laughs> growing plant. Ficus elastica is already a pretty slow growing plant. The variegated type, just like with all plants, grows a little bit slower. But I do feel like this is really impressive because it was just this past summer that it put out four leaves and they're the biggest leaves that it's ever put out so far. It's just a beautiful plant, you know? It's a classic. It has just that marvelous, beautiful watercolor look. And once in a while, I take a look and go, well, aren't you just the pretty, my lights just turned off. Uh, I guess it's 5.30. I gotta turn my lights on. I don't have much to say about this one anyway. It's just my Ficus Elastica Robusta and Robusta just has bigger leaves. I do have a video on the care requirements for this plant. It's one of the earlier videos that I made when I was really adorable and naive and sweet. So I would highly recommend going back and watching that because there is a really good story attached to how I acquired this plant. You could check that video out. It's a pretty typical household plant here in France. So I don't really have much to say about it, to be honest. Oh, My croton. I got this plant probably in late 2018. I know that it was one of my first videos, like croton care. And then the whole video I say croton. And then somebody told me it's croton. And I was like, that's a shame. It only had like three leaves. It was really, really tiny. And as you can see, um, from here to here, I did not know how to take care of it. And then from here to here, I overwatered it. Uh, and then from here to here, that was winter in Lille. And then from here to here, this was summer when I put it out on the patio and it was like, <coughs> this is when I basically just like marched it out onto the patio and put it in direct light or direct sunlight. And it kind of like bleaches the leaves basically because the plant is not accustomed to direct sun. But if you uh, acclimate it to direct sun, this will do fantastic. And now it's kind of cool. I've got kind of like a, I don't know what it's called in English. In French, we call it surtige. When you have a plant that typically grows like a shrub, the way that they raise it is so that it grows like a tree trunk. Kind of like that this plant is growing that way. I love it. Okay, those are all the plants in front of my uh, patio doors. Wait, I close the patio door so that nobody can see me anymore because it's dark outside. It's bright in here. Everybody can see me. I feel really uncomfortable. Okay, we're gonna move on to the begonia cabinet. You ready to see my begonias? Fantastic. Let's go. Let's do it. This has to be one of the most uninteresting angles of my apartment. Go Persia Kigliani. 
I think it's like P zero 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 one. I'm gonna put it on a screen for you to for you to look at. A lot of people know this as Calathea Musica or Calathea Musica Network. The name has been changed, and now it falls under Go Persia. And this one is Go Persia Kegliani P zero 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 one or something like that. This was like designed by someone in the Netherlands, and he filed the trademark for that in like 2008. I have all that information in the video that I referenced earlier about low light houseplants. Easy care low light houseplant that I think does not compare to other Calatheas or Gopersia plants in that it doesn't require copious amounts of humidity and it does really well in low light. It's just a wonderful plant and I really love it a lot and I've talked about it enough and I'm going to let it go because we need to move on to the begoners. Down here we've, oh wow, you can't see me. You could not see me over there. Very well. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is Begonia Metallica. I ordered this from a vendor called Hodnik, located in France. They have an amazing Begonia collection and all of them are $9.95. So you'll get like a rooted cutting for $9.95, but it's really a roll of the dice. I've learned. I've ordered from them twice. It's really a roll of the dice. Oh my God, I'm running. I've lost half the plants I've ever ordered from them. Sometimes they just arrive in really poor condition. I feel like they always send their begonias when they're just a little bit too young. Like they're a little impatient to get those begonias out. And when it comes to cane begonias especially, they have to be a little bit mature in order to make it through like the tragic event of being mailed. Cause plants are not meant to be mailed. So, Every time I order from them, the cane begonias are in the absolute worst condition. They just send them a little too early. It's like sending kittens off when their eyes are still closed. It's not like that at all, but that's what I said. That's what came out of my mouth. The begonia metallica is a pretty sturdy plant, so this one made it, and it has turned into a kind of a stunner. It's kind of a bogus, as we say in French. It's a little bit fuzzy, but simultaneously kind of shiny. I, it's just, it's a really cool plant. And then the undersides, the way that they're like red, I mean, when the light shines through these, ooh, easy care begonia. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you very much for visiting. <laughs> I got a little bit of history here. I've been looking for this. This is begonia lucerna. Or I think it's sometimes known as begonia coralina lucerna. I'll put the name on the screen. I might be getting that backwards. I have been waiting for this plant to come into my life for three years and I just could not find it. It's not in good condition. It was the only one at the greenhouse, but I took it home anyway. Cause I was like, you know what? It's not in good condition. This was like two weeks ago, you know? So it hasn't had time to like fill out or anything. And look, it is putting out a new leaf. I mean, this plant is really in recovery and uh, I'm here to support it, you know? This is Begonia angularis, sometimes called Begonia grave heather, I think. This was sent to me as a, a little baby cutting. The reason that it looks so funky and wonky and weird is that this, this Begonia really grows as like one step, like one stem, like and you're like, what are you doing? Where are you going and why? So I recently took three cuttings of it because it was really long. And then I'm going to, you know, repot it with its brethren so that hopefully I can get kind of like more of a bushy plant. But from now on, I, I'm going to try to keep up more and more with, you know, trimming it when I need to, rooting the cuttings and, you know, planting them in the pot so that I can create more of like a shrub looking begonia, which is what I really like. This is Begonia bravirumosa subspecies exotica. I ordered this from Araflora in 2019. I would say late 2019. And when I ordered it, it wasn't in very good condition. I did my best to revive it. This plant ended up being a stump with no leaves. Baby's having a hard time. And then I put it in my kitchen under a bell jar and it really thrived. It absolutely needs high humidity. So this plant is doing really well in this cabinet. This is the most beautiful I've ever seen this plant yet. Like it's, it's really, I'm really, really excited. I just found this begonia like last week. I needed some cover pots. And so I went to the greenhouse and I bought like, I found out like cover pots were on sale. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I'm gonna buy a million. And so I ended up making off with like, I think like 16 or 17 pots. Anyway, the whole point is while I was hunting for cover pots, I saw this begonia 
and I don't know what this is. I know it's not, I think it's called Arctic Frost or Silver Frost, because I've had one of those and the leaves are huge. So I can't figure out what this is yet. Ooh, and it might have powdery mildew. Oh, damn it. I gotta take care of this begonia tonight. The leaves just like this, this sage green color that's a little bit metallic with the pink edges and the pink underside. I was just mesmerized. And I remember I got home, I ate lunch, and then was like, I gotta go, I, I can't stop thinking about that begonia. And my friend, who is definitely an enabler, was like, you gotta go back for that begonia. It was the only one. And now I realize I have to treat it for whatever's going on here. But we're gonna, we're gonna make it. This is my Primulina Dryas Hizako. This was actually being sold as a streptocarpus. But if you'd like to know more about that and the mix up between streptocarpus and Primulina, watch my video, uh, you know, five low light house plants that I made very recently. Totally different plants from totally different continents. And I thought this was a streptocarpus and I was wrong. Anyway, it's a really cool plant. And I would say that the care requirements are very similar to African violets. Super easy care does great in bright, indirect light, or low light. This is Begonia Marmaduke. It's a very cool begonia. I think that the patterns on the leaves are just wicked awesome. Uh, There's a really neat contrast between the neon green and the maroon red. I bought this from Dibley's Nurseries, I wanna say in 2020. It's just done really well for me, even in low light conditions. It's putting out a new leaf. So this, this is a pretty cool plant. I don't really know if it was named after that big old dog in that comic strip, but it's the big old dog that lives in my begonia cabinet. Yeah, so this is... Well, I'm way too close to the camera. What's wrong with me? I'm way too close to the camera. <laughs> no sense of personal space. I'm so sorry. This is Begonia Seamus. Really neat little begonia. <laughs> really cool. I've never seen a begonia like Begonia Seamus. I found it on eBay from a Swiss seller. And you know, recently I checked that eBay seller's account again because I wanted to see, are they still selling begonias? And they, they never put begonias up anymore, which is <laughs> really sad and really a shame because they had some really amazing varieties. But Begonia Seamus is really cool. I really like it. Slow grower, but really neat. This is Begonia Orpha C. Fox. I bought this from Hodnik in the same haul that I bought the other one in. Which one was it? Uh, Metallica, Begonia Metallica. Uh, I think these are the only two surviving members of that Begonia haul. And this one even, I had to like salvage it. I had to, I, it didn't arrive in good condition. It's it's really coming along. And, and just in the last month, it's put out four new leaves. So I'm really happy, I'm really excited for it. It seems to be doing well for me now. So I'm really happy, man. <laughs> this is Begonia Goguenzis. I think I ordered this with Begonia Berkeley. Berkeley didn't make it through the great closure of the patio door of 2020. <laughs> the little blooms are so teeny tiny and adorable. Oh my God, you guys, they're so cute. This is one of my favorite exotic looking begonias. It's a very beautiful begonia. It has that sort of um, sheen to it. So if the light hits it right, it has kind of this metallic sheen to it. It looks like a tortoise shell. It's got pink on the back. It's got uh, these, these beautiful contrasts of green color on the front. I mean, what more could you ask for in a begonia? It's so beautiful. It's a really cool begonia. I got two more plants. Two more plants to show you. And I just realized I don't know the name of one of them. <laughs> This is Chinanthi Brillamarxi. It's an adorable little plant that has very similar care requirements to, you know, Calathea or Gopersia. It has grown about double in size since July. So, <laughs> not to brag, but, uh, but it is a really lovely little plant. I think it's beautiful. The markings on it are absolutely gorgeous. It's a wonderful addition to the home and it is easy care. It does really well in low light as long as you can provide it with really high levels of humidity. That's all I have to say about this baby. I keep, I keep doing, I've taken like five takes. I've taken like five takes and be like, and here we are. Like why am I doing, like why even just look, this is Fatsia japonica. I did have one of these that was variegated and it was eaten alive by spider mites. Like if you're just looking for a plant to bring some green into your home that doesn't ask a lot of you and does really well in low light, this is, this is one of your men. <sighs> my hair is in my mouth. That's it, folks.
that's a wrap. <laughs> if you've hung in for this long, for this weird, chaotic, half of a living room houseplant tour video, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I would really love to hear from you down below. So please let me know all of your thoughts on these plants or your experience with these plants, or, you know, just say hi, because it actually means a lot to me when you just say hi. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up, you know? Give me a chance in the algorithm. Subscribe, even. I just want to say thank you again for watching, and thank you so much to the people who are members of my Patreon. I really appreciate your support. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. A tremendous thank you to my $10 patrons, Neil, Anthony Rankin, Frederick Bowman, and Carolyn Green, my $6.50 patron, Michelle A, my $5 patrons, Darcy Levitch, Casey Smirna, Topless, Tisha McCann, Michelle Sadowski, James Cobb, Abby Clark, Leah A, Miranda Moyer, Fenner Lamb, Haley Adam Banzoff, Aaron Miao, and Kayla Mann. My $2 patrons, Amin, Karen, Steve A, and Pamela. My $1.50 patron, Tina Halberg, and my $1 patrons, Brianna Phillips, Emily Cephalou, Plant Girl underscore 50 S, Doris Bree, Amanda Panda, Ashley Ega, Lydia, Gracie, Lita Anastasia, Cassandra Lewis, Sophia, JJ Garraway, Elizabeth Valesquez, Wenyang Zen, Josie, Nicholas, Curtis, Lexi Haynes, Sophia Clark, Linda Thea, Claire Lynn, Elizabeth Mary, and Denise Grimm. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.